take a look at what's been happening on the papers in the week in review, looking at the top stories that have made headlines in the political scene this week in studio for this conversation. A recap of my uh, panelists here. Uh, we have uh, Douglas Ebole, who is a deputy governor candidate in uh, Nairobi County. He is under the independent ticket. Um, we have... Um, He's an independent, rather. Uh, we also have uh, Nelson Harvey, an advocate, joining us every weekend here on Weekend Express. We also have Mohamed Sule, who is the MP candidate uh, for the Garissa Township parliamentary seat. And last but not least, Imano Mokoro who is the MP candidate, uh, Kajiado East parliamentary seat under uh, the Mandela Chap Chap ticket. Gentlemen, many thanks for joining us on Weekend Express. So let's begin uh, with what's on the papers this morning, and that is the big story um, across the country, really on the front page of the Saturday Standard, Raila wins big with the verdict uh, uh, welcoming the court ruling there, upholding constituency tallying. Um, uh, same story on the Saturday Nation there, how court dealt IEBC a blow in the poll tally case. And also on the Star newspaper, NASA wins case on tallying, suffers setback on printing. So that will be our focus of discussion this morning. And let's begin with page eight of uh, the Saturday Standard. So the front page here says, Raila wins big. Emmanuel, um, how big a win is this for Raila Odinga? And yeah. the opposition, so to speak. I don't think uh, it's a win for Raila. It's uh, a win for democracy. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, when we talk about um, declaration of results uh, at the constituency, um, there, there have been perceptions that they are stampering of those results uh, from the constituency level to bombers. Of course, the, the returning officer for presidential uh, elections is the um, chairman of the uh, IABC. Uh -huh. But then um, when the results are declared, the constituency level, there's that level of uh, transparency that Kenyans require. Uh -huh. So it's not a, a win for Raila, it's a win for democracy. Right. And that perception, there is transparency in the transmission uh, of tallying and transmission of results. So it's a win for Kenya. I think the headline should be... Uh, a win for democracy. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that, Mohammed, because it's a, if it's a win for democracy, then that means all parties here have won, so to speak. Well, um, I do agree with exactly the statement made by my colleagues. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's a win for democracy, as he has stated. Um, I was really surprised that actually there was a court ruling uh, to this effect previously, which IABC has appealed against it. Uh -huh. One thing actually which has really surprised me uh, and has really caught me unaware is that IEBC being a public institution that is supposed to be non-partisan, non-political, a decision has been made by the court that presidential results to be declared at the constituency level. Mm. And unfortunately, an institution that we all taxpayer has funded are going to court to challenge that decision. I think that was the wrong decision that actually Chipukati team have taken, uh -huh. which was wrong. And I say it is not a win for Raila. It's a win for democracy. Uh -huh. It's a win for each and every individual candidate who is running on these elections come right. eight, eight December. Uh, yeah, Javi, Javi, do you agree? Because uh, even while filing this appeal, IBC had made it clear that they're not quite challenging the decision of the court, that they're only going ahead to seek clarification as to the interpretation of the ruling by the court. Uh, your thoughts on that defense by IBC mm -hmm. and whether this really is a win-win situation for all parties involved? Uh, now, I think uh, IBC has been a little bit deceitful and uh, the, the, the blame is not uh, just on the shoulder of the IBC. I think it's also on the part of the Attorney General who is supposed to be the chief government advisor. Uh -huh. Now, when the Constitution was promulgated in 2010, it uh, made wider provisions to ensure that the will of the people, meaning Wanjiku, Akinyi, Nafula, uh, Halima, and Jerry, are all catered for. Uh -huh. And you see, these individuals, uh, they're only available at the lowest level of the locus of representation, and this is at the village. Uh -huh. Now, to, to, to the extent that uh, this was an aspiration that uh, was put in place much earlier, it cannot lie in the mouth of the IBC or the Attorney General to say that we only sought clarification. Clarification for what? There's a very clear constitutional provision as to what has to be done. And then for five years, instead of putting mechanism in place to implement it, you're putting mechanism in place to whittle down the gains made. Mm -hmm. Then you come and say you want a clarification. Mm -hmm. And if it is said to be a big win for, for, for Raila, then so be it. What does it impl imply? It implies that... Uh, there are two forces uh, that uh, tend to dominate uh, the administrative affairs in Kenya, uh -huh. the forces of impunity and the forces of accountability. Uh -huh. And if, uh, so to speak, uh, Raila speak for, 
for, for, for, for the forces of accountability, uh -huh. then, uh, then Raila will be Kenya then. So be it. Big win for Kenya. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, um, Douglas, your thoughts on this, considering that uh, uh, the, the opposition is especially happy about this car, the, mm -hmm. decision by the court, saying that uh, this will now end a manipulation of votes during the, uh, the tallying process, and mm -hmm. they say it will be more credible because their people will be able to monitor their vote. But will this decision by the High Court and will those results being final at the constituency level really mean that there will be a curbing of the rigging of votes? Um, I think absolutely. Um, the whole point of uh, the returning officer, who's the chairman of the IBC being the returning officer for the presidential, checking Ke the whole Kenya as a constituency, I think it really didn't make sense. Uh, we need to get the results from the constituency level so that they're not altered at the national level. So I think it's uh, one of the things that has been, um, it, it's a landmark ruling, and uh, we actually um, uh, put credit to the opposition. Uh -huh. uh, they, were, they were fighting it. Uh -huh. uh, that's why they're putting credit to Raila. And uh, I think it's a landmark ruling. We need to get the results from the, constitution, uh, the constituency level right. so that we can have credible results. Uh -huh. They uh, cannot be altered. Oh, so, but, but going forward, um, Nelson, what options does IBC have? Because we're yet to see whether they will appeal this decision by the court. Yesterday, IBC indicated that they will be going to the Supreme Court. But if you are to ask me for my honest uh, legal or uh, general opinion as a, as a Kenyan, I think they have a snowball chance in hell uh -huh. on account of any success in the, in the Supreme Court. And uh, it is a high time the IBC and the Attorney General stopped wasting public funds. Absolutely. Look, the monies that are being spent was this exercise, a lot of uh, sums of money. There are many other important uh, issues that uh, the IBC should be concentrating on, uh -huh. rather than uh, appear to be so determined and hell-bent on pursuing a cause that is only favorable to one of the key players in this contest. Uh -huh. uh, it has been the lamentation that they don't have sufficient time, but often when they are met with a calamity of this kind, instead of uh, going back and realizing what the problem is, with an effort to remedy it, they continue digging deeper into the barrel, like uh, the por pro pro proverbial mole. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, uh, and, and the people are not uh, quite pleased with this. They'll continue pouring water with the expectation that the mole will come out. And uh, even if uh, IBC were to appeal, and uh, compared to the other events that uh, appear in the eyes of uh, IBC to be crippling the operations of, uh, of, of the process they're supposed to undertake, mm. I, I don't foresee it uh, standing on the way of the right, coming I, I general this. election. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, it, it, begs, it begs the question that what, what is really happening in IBC? Uh -huh. uh, do they have credible lawyers? Because they need to have very good lawyers to advise them on, on these particular issues. Uh -huh. If they're planning to appeal this, I think it would be, just like uh, my landed friend has said, it would be a waste of public resources uh -huh. and uh, it would be not good for the country. We want the IABC to appear free and fair not to um, appear like they're leaning on one side, uh -huh. so that for we, in order for us to have credible results uh, in this coming general election, the IBC needs to be open. In right. fact, you know, they, they need to be communicating more to the Kenyan public and telling them what is really happening. Uh -huh. so because this is, a, this is a situation that is causing anxiety, and also we have the, another issue, um, which um, we're not going to go into, about the printing of the ballot papers. Yeah, we, we, will, uh, we will discuss that in just a moment, but even just bringing up the issue mm -hmm. of um, leaning to one side as, as, mm -hmm. as we finish up with Douglas, uh, after that was given by the court. We had Attorney General Gideon Wigai accused the courts of playing politics um, and, 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 and not really uh, caring about democracy and you know, the rights of, of the Monanchi. So where does that leave the independence of the judiciary at a time like this? Has this ruling stomped the place of the judiciary in this electoral process? Actually, I'm very disappointed uh, with the comments uh, by, by the Attorney General Gideon Wigai. I expect him to actually be the man who can stand up and actually defend the Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very um, wrong for him to actually make that statement because it doesn't put, the, it doesn't bring the, it actually doesn't push the country forward. Mm -hmm. um, I think what needs to be done is that the IBC needs to take the, the ruling and actually move on. Uh, because that is what needs to happen in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We need the tallying done. We need credible and fair elections what in Kenya. What is happening days for the election, you Thank you. You see, some of the things that is actually making the general public and the opposition very suspicious uh -huh. about the IEBC is about this kind of business that they are conducting. In fact, they need to gain the public confidence. They need to gain the confidence of the opposition uh -huh. as well as, you know, Jubilee or any other party in this country. Now, 
it is very unfortunate. The Attorney General is, is, is the legal advisor to the government. And the, for him to have a go at our judiciary system. You see, we are very small democracy, and we want to imitate those big democracies like the Britain and United States. Uh -huh. That is where, look, we need to set a very good example to the generation that is to come. Right. If, if we are talking about free and fair elections, and then you have got an electoral body that is in and out of the courts on a daily basis, now, where is a free and fair election? Uh -huh. It, you know, it depends the question. Where is a free and fair election? Mm -hmm. What we are simply saying is, look, let Mugai keep off this politics and let the Electoral Commission concentrate on how to satisfy the general public, the Kenyans, who are getting very, very imitated, who are getting very disturbed mm -hmm. by their behaviors going in and out of the courts, challenging the courts every now and then. I right. think that's not the right thing. Right. And I'm asking them today, please, stop going to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Accept the results that came out from the courts yesterday and go on with the rest of the elections. Mm -hmm. All right. Please. Uh, and of course, uh, we have very few days. Uh, Emmanuel, l l let's hear from you uh, when it comes to this case and uh, how IABC should chart the path forward now, uh, setting the pace for peace and transparency, really. Uh, for me, <clears throat> the, the issue of uh, appealing against the ruling uh, is ill-advised uh, because at this time, uh, moment in time, we should be uh, preparing for elections. Uh -huh. The communication we should be getting from IBC, uh, uh, how, 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 when the ballot paper will be delivered, how the, uh, they are preparing for uh, um, polling, uh, whatever polling stations. We have polling stations with 30,000 uh, voters. How are they going to manage those, those crowds? Mm -hmm. Those are the things we should, we should get from them. Uh, appealing at this time, I think, uh, indicates uh, or exposes the uh, motives because. The public will, uh, is wary about court cases, right. and uh, we uh, the perception being created is that they, they, they are not really uh, uh, nonpartisan in terms of uh, arbitration, because a referee should not appeal against. Uh, a goal he has already. I mean, those are the issues we should look, be looking at. Uh -huh. All right, uh, Douglas. And uh, you know, we have we have previous uh, previous incidences uh, with the IEBC, uh -huh. especially in Kenya, where they they tend to appear like they're not fair. And uh, we know this has actually created a lot of problems mm -hmm. in this country. So the, I, I would urge this IBC to actually be free and fair and actually be open to Kenyans and actually not look like they're leaning on one side. Mm -hmm. There are various issues that are coming up, um, especially uh, towards these coming elections. Mm -hmm. not, only is, uh, not only the issue of the landmark ruling, but also the issue about the, the tender mm -hmm. in terms of uh, voter printing. Right. So the IBC should actually be very open and not look like they're leaning on one side. Otherwise, they will plunge this country into chaos. Right. Uh, so the tender printing at uh, uh, Rao is something we're about to get into. But uh, looking at the front page of uh, the papers this morning, uh, Raila wins big. How court dealt IBC blow in Paul Tally case. NASA wins case on Tallying. So um, this is seemingly a, a narrative of one side or you know a, a one party having won. And looking at the allegations that we've had that uh, the uh, having the results uh, being announced at the national level then has a lot of uh, added of votes along the process, it means that there will be an aggrieved party somewhere along the way. How is this likely to change the campaign landscape 40-something days to the election? Are we likely to see any major changes, Douglas? Yes, I think uh, we are likely to see any major changes. And before uh, we ac I actually go into that, mm -hmm. um, we find that when this, when this issue came up the first time, we saw the government coming in actually like a spokesman to the IABC, mm -hmm. which is a very big problem. The IABC should be the one who are supposed to be communicating to Kenyans about these issues whenever the issues come up. I think this is a landmark ruling, and uh, I think uh, the people who actually fought the case um, in, in the courts were the opposition. We had James Orengo there, we had uh, KIE there. It looks like a win for the opposition. It makes, it actually is a blow for the government mm -hmm. because they were actually supporting IEBC on this ruling and they were not uh, accepting that. So I think this is gonna be um, a game changer. But besides that, we have a bigger issue of which uh, I know we are coming into, mm -hmm. the one for, 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 the, for the voters. Absolutely. But I think it is a game changer in the country in terms of um, how free and fair elections are. And I think it's a win not only uh, to the opposition, but also a win to Kenyans as well, because right. democracy has been upheld. Um, Nelson, how is this likely to change uh, or shift the skill now that, now that we seemingly have more accountability for the votes cast for the state house race? Uh, this, this big win uh, for, for, the, for the group of individuals in Kenya who represent accountability, I think it will translate uh, on the ground. Uh, it is most likely now that uh, NASA and uh, 
uh, Right Honorable Amolo Dinga will now be more emboldened in their quest to ensure that uh, their, their 10 million strong uh, votes are, are actually uh, accumulated on the ground and protected. And I think uh, as uh, he's made it quite clear, he's leaving nothing to chance. Uh, he, he will be adopting a, a polling station. He'll be uh, ensuring that uh, there are sufficient mechanisms to, 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 to protect the vote. And I think more importantly, the, the, the opposition may want to get into territories that uh, have so far been outside their reach uh -huh. to ensure that uh, they, 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 they compartmentalize their hold of these areas. And I think the same also applies on the part of uh, Jubilee. We have uh, time without number had the lamentation from uh, NASA that uh, Jubilee wants to steal the poll. So if those lamentations are anything to go by and there was in actual fact an intention to steal the poll, whoever wanted to steal the poll may want not to steal and instead uh, try and ensure that he gets uh, the sufficient uh, voters to to accumulate to them. sufficient And of course, uh, we have the reading of manifestos coming up yeah. in a few days, so we mm -hmm. hope that will make a difference. Uh, but Mohammed, uh, if, even as we, we go to the elections, as it is with this ruling by the court, uh, it means that uh, during the tallying process, and the spotlight will no longer be in Nairobi, um, as has been for the past five years. This will be mm -hmm. mostly at the constituency level. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of talk from the Interior Ministry about the beefed up security down there. Uh, but in terms of just organizing to ensure that there is sanity, uh, even learning from what we saw during the party nominations, how, how are we likely to handle this? Well, the thing is, I, I, think, I think it's going to be more simpler. Mm -hmm. Very, very simplified. It is only that actually the IBC and to that extent Jubilee might be making things so complicated for the Kenyans mm -hmm. who wants to enjoy free and fair democracy in the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Rather than accumulating the 40 million or probably 20 million registered votes into Nairobi, the MP's result will be declared at the constituency level. Mm -hmm. The governor's results will be declared at the county level. Mm -hmm. I think it is very simple for Jibukati just to coordinate, just to coordinate with his returning officers at the constituency levels. Please, can I have the results as you declared at the constituency level? Mm -hmm. I can see how that is very difficult. I can see how that is complicated. And I can see how that warrant for them to go into the court. Mm -hmm. Now, one other thing is that, look, I think Jubilee needs to become a little bit clean on this because they are the sitting government. And work and the function of a government is to promote democracy, mm -hmm. is to, pro to promote multipartisy, mm -hmm. is to um, promote the will of the people. Mm -hmm. Now, for them siding and their legal advisor talking ill about the opposition that the case they took it to the court. This is why now the opposition are becoming very animated. Mm -hmm. That's why the opposition are becoming very worried. And this is the opposition why they are, they are failing to trust the sitting government. Mm -hmm. So please, what we are simply saying is, look, Jubilee, come clean. Accept the results from the courts. Advise your, leg your, 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 your legal advisor. Mm -hmm. Don't get involved with the IBC issue. Chibukati, please stop this business of going to the court. Mm -hmm. Get on with the job and concentrate on what other people, the likes of them, me, and the others, I expected him to do. Mm -hmm. This is a dendal. This issue has been finished. It is not a win for Raila. It is not a win for NASA. It is a win for all of us because we want to enjoy democracy in right. the 21st century. Mm -hmm. We know what happened in 2007. We don't have a repeat of the same scenario in the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Let mm -hmm. us look forward. Let us, let us enjoy democracy to the best of our ability. Unless, let us not have an institution that we all pay for. It started messing around with our democracy right. that we enjoy today. But of course, this is an interactive segment. We'd like to invite you at home to also interact with us on our social media platform. Uh, the hashtag is Weekend Express KTN. You can also call in and give us your thoughts and comments as we head to the elections. Our numbers will be on the screen in just a short moment. But now I'd like to take a look at a report um, prepared by our senior political affairs reporter, Patrick Amimo, with regard uh, to the ruling by the Court of Appeal. And uh, that is a ruling that the Court of Appeal has ruled that the president results declared at the constituency level will be final. The three-judge bench declared that the IBC chair would merely announce the sum total of all the constituency tallies but would have no power to alter any of the figures. The ruling upheld an earlier decision by the High Court which had been challenged by IEBC. And as Patrick Amimona reports, it remains unclear if the IEBC will appeal that decision.
the constituency or the national tiling center. Those are the two choices the IABC and the opposition coalition NASA have been haggling over for the last several weeks. The electoral body had gone to the Court of Appeal to challenge a high court ruling that presidential election results announced at the 290 constituencies should be taken as final. The high court had overstepped its mandate and misread the law. The appellate judges begged to differ. We find no fault in the determination of the high court to the extent that Regulation 83.2 provides that the results of the returning officers are subject to confirmation by the Commission, these provisions are inconsistent with the Constitution and therefore null and void. There is no merit in this appeal. We are not persuaded that the High Court committed an error or assumed a jurisdiction that it did not have. IEBC and the Attorney General had argued that if results at constituency level were declared final, it would open a floodgate of petitions. It would be farcical to suggest, as the appellant did, that, they would, that it would require an agreed candidate to file 290 petitions. There's no more substance in that argument. Mother Karua, 43,881. Mohammed Abduba Dida, 52,848. The declaration of results at the National Tiling Center has been a controversial exercise at every election. The chair of the electoral body has often been accused of doctoring results once they get to Nairobi. The Court of Appeal says there is no constitutional basis for the IBC chairperson to alter presidential results at the National Tiling Center. If any variation or confirmation is anticipated, it has to relate only to confirmation and verification that the candidate to be declared elected president has met the threshold by receiving more than half of all the votes cast in that election and at least 25% of the votes cast in each of more than half of the counties. The IABC had wanted its chair to have the final say on results already announced at the constituency tiling center. But the judges ruled that such sweeping powers which have been used in the past were illegal. It is as hypocritical as it is incongruous for the appellant to doubt the competency, proficiency and honesty of its own staff as the reason for the need to verify the results to ensure they are not tampered with. The appellant has the opportunity, indeed a duty, to vet all its prospective employees to ensure they pass the integrity test. The ruling was loaded by human rights activists as a step in the right direction. The Court of Appeal has upheld the High Court ruling that results declared at constituency level are final. It will be interesting to see whether IABC will appeal the decision at the Supreme Court. Patrick Amimo, KTN News, Nairobi. Well, and as that ruling takes the country by storm, the fate of ballot printing in the country remains caught in the courts. Chief Justice David Maraga has now appointed three judges uh, to hear the application challenging the awarding of the ballot printing paper to the Dubai-based firm Al Gurai. Uh, High Court judges Joel Ngugi, George Odunga and John Mativa will hear the case, which has been filed by the opposition National Super Alliance. Earlier in the day, Yesterday, Justice Odunga allowed the Jubilee Party, the Attorney General, Thunder Alliance presidential candidate, Tekuru Court, and voter Samuel Waweru to be enjoined in the suit that NASA filed against IABC and Al Gurai. Odunga, however, declined to stop the ballot printing exercise, which is due to commence yesterday. The case will now be heard on Tuesday next week. A contract, even if it's about 2.5 billion, cannot be compared to the security of a country, to the life of Kenyans. You know, and we have had, there is already mischief that needs to be corrected because in the past, electoral processes which have been rigged have given this country very difficult situations. Whether it's 2007 or the difficulties of 2013, it has not. The circumstances of this case, as well as the issues to be uh, canvassed, 
raise substantial questions of law under that particular article. And I accordingly direct that this file will be transmitted to the Chief Justice forthwith with a view to empaneling a, a bench of not less than three judges. And I direct that the matter will be placed before that bench on the 27th, that is Tuesday, at 10.30 a.m. And direct the registry to have a folder so that actually the parties who want to file their documents will file their documents in that folder while this matter is going to the Chief Justice. All right, and that is the Electoral Commission. They're still in court with regard to the ballot printing tender. Um, Emmanuel, let me come to you. With regard to the ballot printing tender, um, the case will be heard on Tuesday next week. How do you expect this to play out? Um, I, I don't want to preempt the, the issues of the court, but uh, I'm seeing a situation where we, uh, we are not, you know, in the Public Procurement Disposal Act, it's very clear on how you, 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 you procure. Uh -huh. You, you, you float a tender, then a company's uh, bid, then you, you, you award the, is the lowest bid or highest bid. Right. Uh, if that was followed, and then, then Al Grey came, uh, was the best, then I think that was, uh, uh, we also need to know which, which other companies bidded and whether they are satisfied with the decision by ABC to award the tender. Uh, another thing I want to, uh, uh, moving forward, I think we should have confidence in our own companies. We do a lot of things out of, outside the country. We print our examinations out of the country. Uh -huh. we, we print our, um, everything else out of the country. I think we should empower our own companies, local companies, to do the printing here. So that uh, when you talk about Dubai, Dubai has no, no, no reputation of having uh, the best. Uh -huh. We import second-hand things from Dubai. So are we getting second-hand ballot papers? Right. And, and, and if you just uh, before you move away from that, yes. what are your thoughts on the allegations against this particular firm, um, Al Gurai? I mean, the, the allegations that uh, it had close ties uh, with the executive, face-to-face um, -face meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings. I mean, you're running under the Mendeleev chapter of ticket, which essentially supports re-election of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Yes. Your thoughts on those allegations? I, I cannot say about relationship because I, I'm not aware of the, those relationships. Uh -huh. Actually, we support the re-election of Uru Kenyatta as a party, and uh, but that's that not uh, we are not in the coalition, the, the Jubilee coalition. Right. We are we are an independent party because we don't have a presidential candidate. We have to align ourselves to a presidential candidate. Uh -huh. That's not, not uh, make us uh, blind to the fact that we want a credible election. If uh, Uru is declared the winner, we want. To be done squarely and transparently, mm -hmm. we will support that. If there are room for, for doubt, those are the things we want to remove. Let, let the president win, and let Kenyans accept the will of the people. All right, uh, yes. Douglas, I see you wanted to jump into that. I think I think we should call it for what it is. Mm -hmm. This is an election scandal. It's a big scandal. Let me tell you, uh, if, if, if it was in a developed country, this is a big scandal. And, you know, people should be resigning. Mm -hmm. uh, the allegations that um, the, the, the president was seen with um, some of the, the people from Al mm -hmm. from this printing company, and the association, you know, it creates um, a big election scandal. And I think, you know, the government needs to be, needs to come forward and be very open with this. Right. Because um, if you're going to have a situation whereby you, you feel like there's an influence by the government uh, to actually... Um, single source, one company, whether, is it co whether it's cosmetic in nature that we don't have time, we have to single source, and then there's this association. I, I think, uh, you know, the opposition should be very worried about this issue, right. and that's why they're running to court, mm -hmm. because you have to have credible elections. If you, if you single source from one company and it's alleged that you have a relationship with them, mm -hmm. who, 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 can, who can deny that you're going to rig the election? Um, Mohammed, is this as big a scandal as uh, Douglas makes it uh, appear? Because even while the allegations have been uh, fronted, we've had uh, an, an admission, so to speak. I mean, there was an admission that, yes, there was a meeting, but they were not discussing the election um, ballot printing tender. But in terms of perception, that meeting was held. Um, that brings in a lot of issues of mistrust, not just from the opposition, but also from Kenyans as the electorate. Um, Michelle, I wouldn't go as far as that. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very weighty issue. It affects all of us, <clears throat> and uh, an allegation has been made. And as we all understand that you are innocent until proven guilty, mm -hmm. and I do understand that opposition, quite rightly, have moved into the courts. Now, those evidence will be tested in the courts. If the allegation that is being made by the opposition then is proven beyond reasonable doubt 
in our courts of law, mm -hmm. then I think that is what we need to abide. But at the moment as we are, remember, the Jubilee, the president himself, mm -hmm. and the rest of them, those allegations, they have refuted. Mm -hmm. And they have said there was no one single time that a tender issue was being discussed as far as the al Gurai is concerned. Mm -hmm. But as my colleague has said, there is, this issue was in court before. And actually, uh, I, 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 there's one thing that I really fail to understand. Why is that IBC are so much interested in going to the courts and all of And the reason why I'm saying is, there have been previous doubts that has been raised about al Gurai. Mm -hmm. When they had that, now the excuses that they're using is that there are only 45 days or 44 days left to the election, mm -hmm. and they never had an humble opportunity to beat this. Now, that will not serve the credibility of the elections. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, there are international communities that's been involved. Mm -hmm. We want to raise ourselves above most of the other African countries. Mm -hmm. Look, we don't want us to behave like Ugandans and the Rwandans and those countries that is being pulled by dictatorships. Mm -hmm. We want to, to be seen transparent and a democracy state. So what I'm saying is, is stakeholders are very vital in a democratic process. Mm -hmm. If you don't involve the stakeholders, regardless of where they are at that particular time, whether they are the government or the opposition, then always your credibility will be doubted. Right. So what I'm saying is at the moment, we wait what will happen on the Tuesday, on the 27th, mm -hmm. when the issue goes to the court, and then obviously the evidence will be tested. Until we see the evidence that will be presented by the opposition in a full swing, mm -hmm. then we, 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 we will not be empty. All right, I'm um, Douglas and Daniel. So before I come to you, let's take a caller on the line. We have Ernest Rodiambo who's calling in from Siokimau. Ernest, good morning. What's your question or comment? Uh, very good morning to you, uh, Michelle, and the uh, panel. Uh, I want to appreciate the panel because the deliberations have been quite sober. Uh, I want to make comments regarding uh, the, uh, the issue of the uh, ruling yesterday. Uh, I'd like to stay away from the, the ballot paper one because I would like to respect the courts. But um, on the issue of yesterday's ruling, uh, I want to talk about soberliness. Um, I just want to use an analogy. When you've been in power for five years, like Jubilee has been, it's, it's quite possible that you become drunken with power. Now, we have a situation here where we have the courts, which is a sober institution, uh, trying to help, you know, think about a drunk man, meeting another drunken man, uh, and they're trying to get home. Of course, the, the, the drunk man will not take them home. They will go to a pub to continue drinking. But if, you, if a drunken man can't find their way home and they meet a sober person, they're probably going to show them where home is. Here is home. I'm talking about the judiciary. Trying to take IBC back to soberliness. If IBC decides to appeal this ruling that was given yesterday, they are continuing in their drunken stupor that is being drunken with power, uh, just as Jubilee is. Jubilee is leading them to more drunkenness because they are already drunk. If they choose not to appeal, uh, to go to the Supreme Court, IBC is coming back to soberliness, and they are, they are now going to be an independent institution, building their confidence in the public, and that's what everyone expects. Thank you very much, Michelle. Many thanks. Many thanks. That is uh, Anastro Diambo calling in uh, from Siokimau. And uh, very interesting uh, points that are being made by Alex. But Douglas, you have something to finish off. Oh, yeah. I, I just wanted to add... Um, you know, uh, for the government, uh, especially when these allegations are coming through, and also for the IABC, it's very fundamental and very important for them to have a session, a sitting session, mm -hmm. both with the government and the opposition, to actually discuss these issues. But once you take a, a, a side, or you appear to be taking a side, then it creates um, a lot of doubt. Mm -hmm. And uh, once Kenyans have doubt in the, in the credibility of this IABC, of which, you know, we've had a history with IABC and the problems we've encountered, once Kenyans have a doubt, then it creates a recipe for chaos. Because now Kenyans will not accept any results or whatever IABC is doing. Mm -hmm. And also for the sake of the government, whenever they're planning uh, to deploy all these security apparatus, as alleged, I think they need to have a meeting with the opposition so that they can decide how to manage this election. So it can be a meeting that as, you know, they discuss this in a meeting and they come up with, uh, with ideas and uh, how they need to manage this election. Right. But if you do it by yourself and it appears like you're trying to protect yourself, mm -hmm. then that is also another recipe. All right, and the cares. legal process and the, um, the the judiciary is also looking like a very important stakeholder in this process as we speak. Uh, so this case of uh, the ballot printing per tender will be uh, heard in court on Tuesday. Um, Wakili Havi, what options now lie for the RABC in terms of the, uh, this ballot printing tender? And also, 
uh, what options does a country have? Uh, because we all want transparent and credible elections, but with very few days, should this tender be cancelled? Where do we begin as a country? Uh, the, the short story that is IBC's preparedness for the August poll is one that is punctuated uh, with trial and error, more of an error <laughs> than, than even the trial itself. Uh, IBC has distinguished itself in making mistakes after mistakes. And uh, the, the case that we're facing now would be the seventh amongst many of the other cases that IBC has had to meet in respect of its preparedness. And uh, I, I think uh, the opposition or the people on whose shoulder the responsibility of running accountability rests know for a fact that uh, the chances of success of this current litigation are very doubtful. But that of itself does not mean that this case is uh, without merit. Mm -hmm. The, the case is with a lot of merit, and we need to interrogate where did this uh, scandal emanate from. It didn't emanate from, uh, from, from NASA. It's actually the media that uh, put out the pictures and the story of the association between Al Guraya and uh, some uh, members affiliated with the Jubilee administration. Mm -hmm. Now, it is an issue of integrity. The court may not be the best forum to determine whether or not the, 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 there was an impropriety of the nature that we are meeting right now. Because if you interrogate the, the case that has been put forth by NASA right now, the case is concentrated on the fact that there has been an incestuous relationship between Al Guraya and uh, members of uh, the Kenyatta family. Uh -huh. uh, and then what is the response that we are getting from uh, Jubilee? You saw yesterday they came in to be joined into that case. I think that's another tactical mistake. You're being accused of having <laughs> participated in this offense instead of staying by, by the side and watching how it unfolds. You come in. Now, even if the court will not fall in favor of NASA, which is most likely, bearing in mind that uh, a court of law handling an issue of judicial review has to take into account the public interest. Mm -hmm. And the public interest here will be, unless, of course, the contract is so badly tainted that it cannot be performed, then it should be allowed to go its full course. Mm -hmm. But it is quite clear in my mind that this is one of the many battles that uh, the, the, the accountability team has taken to demonstrate how rotten the IABC system is and whether or not the litigation succeeds, it will still prove the fact that IABC is rotten. Right. Um, and, let's also focus, just before we wind up, on the fact that uh, that... Uh, printing exercise was due to begin yesterday and uh, one of the three judges who's, be, who's on the bench uh, compiled by Chief Justice uh, David Maraga uh, was unable to stop the commencement of the printing of these papers. Does this mean that the exercise will go on even while the court case is still continuing? But okay, just to jump on that, mm. as much as the printing is going on and uh, uh, we have these allegations pending and we mm. also have uh, a case to be had on Tuesday, mm -hmm. I think uh, th this issue is, is quite serious. I don't know how people. Uh, I don't know if people understand the magnitude of this issue right. of the ballot paper. It's quite serious, and if Kenyans feel like they are dissatisfied with the process, or the process is not clear and well defined mm -hmm. in terms of how uh, the procurement is done, and also we have to look at the background of the company itself. It has been alleged that you know there've been issues uh, in how they've been handling elections in other places. Mm -hmm. Looking at the background and looking at these circumstances, this is an election a scandal that needs to be sorted out as soon as possible, mm -hmm. and if it's not sorted out in the right way, I think it's going to bring a lot of problems right, in this country. All right. Um, let's have your final comments, uh, Douglas, as, as, as uh, we, we wind up. Uh, the state of the REBC's preparedness as we speak um, and the, the state of other stakeholders in the electoral process as well, that is the ESCC, we have uh, the security docket, um, are, are they working together really to ensure we have a peaceful election, a credible election? Okay, my, my thing is to actually say that, you know, we haven't seen any good and proper communication from the IABC. Mm -hmm. The IABC needs to have, I, I wonder if they have a communication uh, department. They need to be communicating to Kenyans how they are coordinating each and every move that they're doing so that Kenyans can, you know, worry less and know that the process is continuing. Mm -hmm. uh, without that, I think, um, and uh, a lot of suspicion happening, I think we're going to have a big problem in terms of uh, people actually finding credibility in terms of the IABC. Mm -hmm. And we expected this IABC to be very open, uh, to give Kenyans an option whereby they, they can have uh, democracy actually happening and they can have an IABC they can trust uh, because elections have always been an issue 
in this country, and especially IABC has always been the center of focus. So they need to have communication. They need to have a communication. The communication department needs to communicate very well mm -hmm. to Kenyans, even if it's every day, on what is happening, so that Kenyans can have a free and fair elections and they can be comfortable with the IABC running these elections. All right, um, Javi, let's have your final comments, especially on this uh, ballot printing uh, scandal and also the credibility, um, or well, not really the credibility, um, but uh, seemingly. Wafula Chebukati's powers now as the chairperson of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, because that was one of the, um, the, the arguments that they had, that his power as the chair would be reduced if those results were not announced at the national level. Well, I don't think he needs to be so much worried about his powers so long he delivers free, fair, and credible elections. Mm -hmm. And that is why people are going to court and saying that we want the presidential results, knowing the history that we have in 2007 and 2013. That is why actually people are saying that we want the result to be declared at the constituency level. Mm -hmm. Still, he remains the man in charge. Once the result is being declared at the constituency level, that result will come to him at the headquarters of the Pomas of Kenya or whatever is going to be for him to tally. Mm -hmm. So no one is taking away that responsibility from him. What the Kenyans are saying, what we are saying is that you want to create a system that each and every individual stakeholder in this country mm -hmm. has got a trust. Mm -hmm. That is, that is actually, Jibukati, he needs to leave a legacy. He shouldn't be challenging, actually, the courts. He needs to leave a legacy and becomes the, the, the chairman of a commission that has delivered a credible, free, and fair election. Mm -hmm. So his powers have not been taken away. So what we're Jibukati, we're simply saying is, look, your powers are still intact. What we're simply saying is, look, we want to have a system that we all trust. Whether you are running for a president, whether you are running for an MP, an MC, whatever it is, we, we want him to create a system that all of us will trust. Mm -hmm. So what we are simply saying is, please, allow, allow the will of the people to take course. All right. That is what the ABC needs right. to do. Um, and, and, and may I add on this? Uh -huh. It will be very interesting. As we are going into the 2017 election, there is tension, there is fear, countrywide. So many people are trying to relate this election, that one of 207. Mm -hmm. And most of the tension, if you look at it, actually it is coming from IEBC. And at the same time, we have got internal security ministry. That is threatening, which is not actually right. Look, all institutions in this country must be independent. Whether you are cabinet secretary, whether you are chairman of a commission, mm -hmm. you all need to be independent. And that is why we had the 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look, the oppositions have got the right to say whatever they want because they are in the political landscape. Mm -hmm. If Raila, Raila says something, and then you as a public servant, you start jumping out of the car and say why Raila is saying that, please correct, give a device where necessary. But then, any statement that comes from the opposition, please don't counter it with a threat. You see, like right. yesterday, I was, I was a bit concerned, Michelle, if I mm -hmm. may say this. Uh -huh. the, 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 the internal security minister, the, the defense minister, they, all of them, they were there. The kind of rhetoric that is coming from them is not good. Reassure us. Tell us the election will be free and fair, mm -hmm. and we make sure we maintain security, regardless of where you are. All right, all right. Um, interesting, Emmanuel yeah. Mokoro. Um, very briefly, your final comments as we close. Even um, also just touching on the disconnect that we're seemingly seeing uh, to independent parties and candidates affiliated uh, to President Uhuru Kenyatta, because there seems to be a disconnect even with you and um, uh, Mohamed Suley, both of you supporting his re-election. Uh, talk to us about that. Yeah. yeah uh, um... There's a lot of competition between uh, the mainstream, well, the, the two major parties, and the, uh, those who broke away in terms of uh, independent candidates. Uh -huh. As we didn't break away, we were in Mandela chapter. Initially, I was in the Jubilee, but I didn't want to go through nominations because of the, those issues of uh, transparency. Uh -huh. So I opted to, 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 to join the Mandela chapter, which is, uh, we are not affiliated, we are, we are supporting the president. Right. Now, um, that internal rivalry, sibling rivalry, or friendly fire, is uh, bringing a lot of tension. As you saw what happened in Nyeri, and uh, I think it plays out everywhere. Uh, the, the president is wise enough, and he has played it uh, wisely, so that he does not antagonize his support base. Uh, one, another final remark, uh, because this is a closing remark, as we go to the campaign, I want to talk with the ke ke fellow Kenyans. After 8th of August, we will remain friends, we will remain neighbors. Uh, I come from Kajiado. Uh, the past week we have had a lot of uh, issues about uh, uh, politicians issuing inflammatory remarks. 
Uh, I want to tell Kajado. Kajado, uh, we are friends, uh, we are neighbors, and we remain friends after elections. This election comes and goes, and, and, it goes. and uh, we remain Kenyans. Absolutely. Um, uh, Harvey, let's have your final comments. Unfortunately, Mohammed, we're out of time. Very briefly. Very briefly. Uh, we, 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 we have no partnership in the uh -huh. We have said that we're going to support the election of the president himself, uh -huh. Uru Kenyatta. Uh -huh. That is what we have said. All right. But uh -huh. also, we want the president himself. Because, for example, where I come from, I'm from Garissa Tamsu constituency. Uh -huh. And my opponent, my rival, is a majority leader in Jubilee. Right. So if the president comes to Garissa and then he campaigns for both of us, uh -huh. or if the president comes and he asks for only his thoughts, and he does not dwell with the duality business, then we remain friends and we'll support and the election all of right, the president. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we will not be giving any more closing comments. We're out of time uh, completely. So thank you so much for joining us on Weekend Express. It's been an interesting discussion on the preparedness of the Electoral uh, Commission for the elections, 40-something days away. We've been speaking to Emmanuel Mokoro, who is the MP candidate, Kajiado East, under the Mendeleo Chap Chap ticket. We've also been speaking to Mohamed Suley, MP candidate, Garissa Township, also under the Mendeleo Chap Chap ticket, um, advocate Nelson and Harvey, and last but not least, Doug Douglas Ebole, who is the deputy governor candidate in Nairobi County. He is running as an independent. And that has been Weekend Express, bringing us to a close of the discussion. Many thanks for watching. My name is Michelle Ngeli. I'll see you again tomorrow morning, same time, same place. But it's here at KTN News. I'll be coming up with more news later on at the top of the hour.